And now, get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Vic and Say. Written by Paul Reimer and brought to you each weekday by the makers of Crisco. Well, sir, it's about 4.30 o'clock as our scene opens now. And here in the living room of the small house halfway up in the next block, we find Mr. Victor Gook all by himself. Mr. Gook has spent the afternoon coping with a particularly complex job of office work. And at this moment, a familiar voice is heard in the kitchen. You in there, Vic? I don't go. Still working? Yeah. Well, I don't care if you're busy or not. There's something I want to tell you. It's the excitement. <laughs> Can I sit down a minute? Sure. Sit down an hour. You're not through. I'm not through, but I'm over the hump. The tough problems are all solved. I can coast in now. As a matter of fact, all I have to do is copy the results of my labors neatly on a clean piece of paper. Well, don't even do that for a little bit. Put on your pen and ink. I want you to listen to this. Okay. Put on your pen and ink. Okay. I've been over to Daddy's. You're always over to Daddy's. First time I've been over there today. She was over here a while ago, wasn't she? Just to borrow a pinch of salt was all. She was over this morning, too, wasn't she? Well, just to read me a letter she received from her mother was all. Goodness, Vic, there isn't any more running back and forth between Dottie and me than there is between other ladies in the neighborhood. Oh, that live in... I don't care, Dr. Street. Well, if you don't care about stuff, don't bring up stuff. Okay, okay. What's the excitement? They're going to have a housewarming. Chuck and Dottie? Chuck and Dottie. They haven't set a date yet, but it'll be soon. I think I'll wear my little blue frock with the low-cut neck and the petty point sleeves and those sweet beaded slippers with the impudent bows and my chain bracelet. If you knew uh, all the exciting trash I had to tell you, you'd be quiet and listen and not waste time with the funny, funny jokes. All right, Morgan, Miss Perrin, my dearest love. Sixty people. Sixty people at the housewarming? Sixty people. Thirty couples. Where on earth did Chuck and Dottie ever dig oh, up that? Well, many of them. Neighbors right here in the block. And then there's business friends of Chuck. And then there's people Chuck and Dottie have made friends with since they've moved to town. They're both such mixers, you know. Why, goodness, when we come here, I never had six friends to my name for over a year. Chuck and Dottie know everybody. Yeah, I've seen their hail fellow well-met deportment when they meet. Well, hey, I want to tell you as much details as I can before they slip my mind. In the first place, what was it you said the other day you suspected Chuck would be in a penny popper? Penny popper? Some expression that meant stingy. Quarter porter? Dime chime? Uh-uh. Oh, well, don't make any difference. But listen to this. You can just change your opinion of oh, Chuck. Oh, nickel nurser. Yeah, nickel nurser. Penny popper, quarter porter. And uh, nickel nurser was the expression. Well, you can just change your mind about Chuck's stinginess. I already have. Yeah? I decided last week Chuck was willing to pay his part of the freight. Remember when he and I strolled down to get some cigars and then some ice cream for you girls? No, uh, but let me talk. Shoot. Written invitation. Hey, hey. Expensive paper and envelopes, green ink, two cents stamp on everyone, and the mailman drops yours in the box. I faint, I fade, I fall. No, but most housewarmings, they call you up on the telephone. Uh Uh-huh. Expensive paper and envelopes, green ink, two cents stamp on everyone, and the mailman drops yours in the box. In that connection, I want to... And, hang on to your hat. Okay. R-S-B-P. Huh? If you can't come, write a note and say so. If you can come, write a note and say so. The world crumbles beneath my feet. To quote a famous authority, has civilization sunk so low a common, ordinary American... That goes for us that live right next door, and it goes for knee suffers and razor scums that live just across the alley. Everybody's got to write a note. The main man will be as busy as he be. I'll say he will. Poor main man in your sturdy gray, I saw you trudge along today with postal cards and billy do. I bet you... Oh, oh, Vic, I haven't got my teeth into this yet. Go ahead. A butler. Yeah? A man to greet people at the door when they arrive and announce their names and take their rest. Oh, for Pete's sake. For Pete's sake is right. This isn't the Virginia Avenue I knew. Virginia Avenue's going to scream like a panther and call for a drink of cold water. (laughs) A butler yet. You know who I think the butler's going to be? A former retainer of King Spooner the 15th in Port Uncle Princeton. Fletcher. Really? Well, they're going to ask him anyway. A job like that's right down Uncle Fletcher's alley. Yes, he'll love it. <laughs> and out to Mr. and Mrs. Alvey Trollo of the 700 block on West Monroe Street. Yes, Uncle yeah. Fletcher just love that. Uh-huh. Donnie's idea, isn't it sweet? Uh-huh. And out to Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Horan of the 1500 block on South Oak Street. And their children, Arthur, Harold, Vivian, George, no, Harry... No, no kids. No kids? No kids. That's a departure. Isn't it? 
This housewarming is strictly high class. La di da, up one side and down the other, from beginning to end and in the middle. Are the guests dressing? Hmm? Are tailcoats and silk hats in order? Are the gentlemen expected? They talked about it. They talked about it. I very much fear a good many. Yes, yeah, like that'd scare people out, of course. But they talked about it. Mm. <laughs> you don't think Chuck Brainfeeble is a dollar drooper now, I bet. <laughs> Do you? Chuck Brainfeeble is the mad master of the revels. I would drink a toast from Chuck Brainfeeble's slipper. I Won't would... be any of that. No? No, sir. Such guests as Charlie Ray just come and Ike Neesta for a little mope and pine if they don't Let them mope little... and pine. Uh, yes. Yeah, but... Oh, I got oceans more trash to tell you, Vic. <laughs> okay. Out in the kitchen, Dottie's engaged that Mrs. Hockerman from over on Locust Street and her daughter, Jeanette. They're going to fix refreshments and all. Hmm. Now, hold on to your hat again. All right. Uh, who's the shoe shine fellow you talk about that works down in the Butler House Hotel barbershop? Booker Lincoln McKinley? Yes. His book He's gone. going to wear a white coat and patent leather shoes and wander around among the guests with a tray of solid peanuts and junk. Gosh. <laughs> Isn't your head spinning? Yes. Yeah. It's Chuck and Dottie Brainfeeble doing all this, Vic. Chuck and Dottie Brainfeeble. Chuck and Dottie Brainfeeble have earned oh, my Oh, and concern. music. Music, too? Mm, your chum Hancock stops going to sing those two vocal solos of his. Well. He's not a guest, of course. No? Naturally not. He's just a plain entertainer. After he sings his songs, he collects his salary and goes in the kitchen and out the back door. Seems to me Hank is deserving of more oh, than that. Oh, this is a la-di-da, housewoman. No riffraff allowed. Oh, riffraff is a rather hard and term to And you know write. who's going to render his accompaniment? No. That other chum of yours from the barbershop, Alf Musherton. Really? On the cornet, huh? Yes. Chuck and Dottie did think of renting a piano. Huh? What are those two vocal solos Hank sings? Oh, would that these pale hands chrysanthemums might gather... Throw me over the grape arbor, a single red, red rose, my love. Yeah. I don't believe I ever heard of such a mad, frenzied orgy. Why, this will eclipse the whole brilliant society. Oh, and here's something Chuck wants to do, and Dolly don't. Have the Minneapolis Symphony Orchestra out in the backyard playing muted music while beautiful girls... Hire a detective. Hire a detective? Yes. To keep an eye on the ladies' jewelry and snake out any outsiders that come without invitations. I call that going a little strong. Well, Dolly don't like the notion at all. She thinks it's in bad taste. Unnecessary show. Mm. But Chuck's enthusiastic. He wants to hire this fella, see, and have him wear a false mustache, see, that keeps falling off, see, so the guests will know he is a detective, and he'll lurk around doorways, don't you know, and every once in a while pat himself on the hip where there's a big bulge that gives it away. He's carrying a revolver. No, I call that gilding the lily. Well, I'm sure Dottie won't let him hire any detective. Mm. Let's see... How many people does that make they're hiring? Oh, and Bluetooth Johnson. What about Bluetooth? Chuck's giving him 50 cents just to be around handy to run errands. Make himself useful, don't you know, and so on. Uh-huh. How many does that make they're hiring? Well, Uncle Fletcher. Oh, Uncle Fletcher's considered a guest. Oh, is he? Sure. Well, Mrs. Hockerman. And her daughter, Jeanette, that's two. Booker Lincoln McKinley. Three. And the musicians, Hank Ustop and Alf Musherton. Five. And Bluetooth Johnson. Six. Just think. Six. Come shoe Gus, it makes seven. Who? The sleuth, the detective. Oh, I know they won't hire him. Mm. They're given a housewarming and employing six people. When is the housewarming? Soon. Soon. Mm. Chuck and Dottie Brain people are doing this thing. Chuck and Dottie Brain people. Mm. <laughs> Aren't you giddy? Mm. Aren't you giddy? Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block.